there will always be something which will be left. So whatever you are doing, just focus on that, enjoy that, do it passionately, do it well, and things will work out. Although it's, it was said in a slightly different aspect, but the rules remain the same. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Sandeep Sharma. Your exams are just about a week away. So in this very small brief video, I'm just going to emphasize upon what you already need to know and some of the important tips if you find useful, you can incorporate for the last week revision. Many of you might be thinking, sir, what can happen in last seven days? A lot can happen in last seven days. You need to understand that every point, everything which you are reading is important and it may be a potential question. Having said that, you need to focus on certain key aspects of the preparation as well. There is a saying that the one who finishes well is the one who finishes the best. And that is true for entrance exam also. So when if you are an aspirant appearing for need super speciality pediatrics, uh, there are a few key principles that you should keep in mind. The first key principle is revise frequently asked topics and quick review of the untouched areas. No particular system should be left untouched. Second principle is for commonly asked genetic disorders. Now, these are based upon some of the commonly asked questions which students have asked me in the live programs, live videos as well as on other areas. So, if you are uh, focusing on a commonly asked genetic disorder, now the time to understand the fine details of the protein being produced, the function, you know it already, you have read it already, you can read it, you can revise it. But for frequently asked topic in last week revision, focus on the chromosome number and whether it is short arm of chromosome or long arm of chromosome rather than remembering the entire locus of the gene, right? So for revision, unless it is a very, very important topic like say uh, micro deletion syndrome like Dyer-Roch syndrome where you are supposed to remember that the deletion TIT gene is at 22Q11.2. Here you need to remember the entire locus, but in vast majority focus on the chromosome number and the uh, short arm or long arm that is more than enough. Then do not leave any major system untouched as I've said before. Uh, if you, there is a particular system like for example you have not done rheumatology in the last three weeks or four weeks, you have been good in that. At least in the last seven days the three, four, five important areas from that spending hardly 15-20 minutes even if it is a very quick flipping of the pages go through your notes and do not leave any untouched area. Because whatever you have seen, whatever you have, uh, you know, seen in the last one week, revised in the last one week, you get confidence and even if an atypical question is asked, you have a better chance of getting the correct answer. Then read major national health programs in pediatrics superficially. So you need to read the major health programs, but do them superficially. Don't go into the details of preemblem, uh, goals and final points. What is that area? When was it launched? And what are the key aspects related to pediatrics, right? Avoid any unnecessary epidemiological data or pathogenesis details in the last one week. Latest updates, including the uh, re recent IAP updates, re recent AOCN updates, they should not be missed. Do not skip your meals. Uh, take six to eight hours of regular sleep and do not, you know, overindulge in anything right now. Moderation is the key right now. Do not sleep during the daytime. Uh, you need to set your body clock accordingly so that many of you might be uh, preparing very hard, reading all through night and in the day you will be sleeping. The NEET SS exam will be held in the daytime and so you need to adjust your body clock so that you are not sleepy. Because what will happen is if in the last one month you are sleeping in the time frame from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. or 5 p.m., your body will also adjust accordingly and even if on the exam day you are awake because your body clock is working like that, you will feel sleepy and you will have a problem in concentration. End of the day, you are all doctors, you are all mature people and nobody to tell you ki how you should be, you know, creating your body clock and stuff like that. But there are some people who take it for granted that no, we will be able to concentrate body doesn't work like that. So you need to be serious about it and readjust, recalibrate your body clock in the last seven days before you sit for the exam and go with confidence. You are a pediatrician. You are not some ordinary person. You have achieved a certain status in society. You have done diploma or MD or DNB. You have a status in society. You have a status yourself. End of the day, worst case scenario, you are still a pediatrician. You still have uh, a degree in your hand and you still have skills of handling kids in your hands. 
सो डोंट वरी अबाउट इट ऑल यू कैन गेन इज गेन अ डिग्री गेन समथिंग नथिंग टू लूज हेयर दैट इज अ की एस्पेक्ट दैट यू नीड टू फोकस अपॉन अ लॉट ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स विल ऑल्सो से सर आई एम अनेबल टू फिनिश माई सिलेबस इवन इफ आई गिव यू टेन ईयर्स टू प्रिपेयर देर विल स्टिल बी सम पार्ट विच इज लेफ्ट सिलेबस इज अनलिमिटेड uh even if you read everything there is a possibility you will forget everything uh in the exam what it matters is you should be able to recall from your subcortical memory and bring into perspective bring it into a actionable thing and identify among the four options given to you there will always be something there was a movie also where where there is a dialogue between the actor and actress that uh, there will always be something which will be left so whatever you are doing just focus on that enjoy that do it passionately do it well and things will work out although it's it was said in a slightly different aspect but the rules remain the same so these are the key principles we should keep in mind i know the answer of this uh, movie which i'm talking about the point here is taking out good things from whatever you can when you prepare for the exam and coming to the areas not to be missed during revision see you may or may not get anything from this think this uh, list which i'm going to talk about this is not exactly a list this is just ticking the boxes areas if see in case you already have a list of topics ready you want to see in the last week go with that why because you yourself know it better what are your strong areas what are your weak areas but for somebody who's at odds or who is at crossroads where i should be focusing these are the areas that are not to be missed during revision please understand that this is not a predictive list this is only based upon the last few year paper patterns the paper pattern this year may entirely change or it may conform to what it has been happening you prepare according to likelihood of something being asked in the exam so last week whatever preparation you are doing keep doing that but keep in mind that the following areas have a high yield rate every year in super speciality exams so first is nrv 8th edition you should be thorough with pals algorithms very important every year they are asked aims new neural protocols now people often ask sir what about aims pico protocol if you have already read aims pico protocol revise it but in case you have not read aims pico protocol in the last one week avoid it yes i am saying it avoid it because it's too extensive too tricky and trying to read it in the last one week uh the benefit you are going to get out of it versus the time you will spend on it it is not beneficial the time to read a new topic in aims pico protocol with one week away that is gone aims nico protocols are still doable if you have done aims pico protocol already you can read give a quick reading of that selectively vitamin mineral deficiency states often neglected very frequently asked nelson good enough don't go anywhere else inherited tubular disorders and obstructive neuropathies last two neat ss exams had almost uh, six to seven questions asked from these two areas so there are videos which we have made on the plado ss as well these are very quick review videos go through them and in these are the bare minimum things which we have discussed in the videos you are supposed to read more about them major trisomies and aneuploidies you know that they are asked very frequently pediatric leukemias and solid tumors in solid tumors focus on the neuroblastoma wilms tumor and uh, certain aspects of lch and certain aspects of uh rhabdomyosarcomas other rare tumors you can skip brain tumors focus more on the etiology prognosis wise rather than going into the fine details then drugs asked in cardiology and neonatology you are supposed to read them do not go into unnecessary details of drugs abdominal surgical emergencies very frequently asked not only how you are going to make the diagnosis but the differentials and the basic surgical techniques like if they ask you what is the next step in management you should be clear for example if they ask intersusception first you should know when you should be suspecting intersusception secondly what are the variants or what are the similar things which can present with intersusception whether it is truly intersusception or it is mickel's diverticulum simple which is causing a painless bleed if it is a painful bleed and there is a features like vomiting etc and the typical signs have been mentioned uh, of intersusception it will be intersusception then what is the next step in management whether you are uh, investigation of choice whether you are going to go in for a barium or you are going to go in for investigation uh, like ultrasound and what is the next step in management when will you do surgery when will you do non surgical techniques what are the indications of surgery these are the areas you should be focusing on i'm just giving an example of abdominal surgical emergency so if you are reading dd go uh, read with the dd go look at the key points key uh, more common in males or females what is the most common risk factor what is the most common presentation investigation of choice next step 
indication for surgery go like this do not waste unnecessary details on the pathogenesis why we are are getting hypertrophied and so on the time for understanding is gone now it is rapid revision that you need to do uh, major pediatric scoring systems both the emergency and the non-emergency ones uh, apgar score silverman anderson score downey score uh, ab2 score all these scores have to be done in addition all the other scores which you read alvarado score etc which you read which are less frequently used uh, but are relevant in the exams, you need to read them. Latest AOCN and IEP updates you have to read and ISFAGAN and SFAGAN on commonly asked GI conditions you have to go through. So these are the areas. They may look like a very you know small list, but there are topics and subtopics in between. Uh, so in case you are at crossroads, go through these topics at least once before you sit for the exam. Having said that, you, be, you yourself are your best judge. So all the best for your exam. You have done everything. You know everything. Have confidence. If any time you start panicking, say to yourself, I am a pediatrician, I know all the answers, the question is written there, answer is written there, I may not know it immediately, but I have read about it, or I have heard about it, or I have seen this condition somewhere, go with your instinct, go with your subcortex, and identify the best possible answer among the options given, and you will do well in the exam. End of the day, everybody has prepared well, so it all comes down to whether it is your day or not. Even if it is not your day, you still get another chance. So go with smile, come out smiling, and do well in your exam. God bless everyone. Thank you. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from Prep Ladder.